This video shows how to play sound in Linux with the C programming language using the Pulse Audio Simple API. The reason I use the Pulse Audio Simple API is that in the Linux distributions I have used so far the sound device file in slash dev is not openable because it is used by Pulse Audio. Then you could use the ALSA library. ALSA is inside the Linux kernel and the low level audio implementation below Pulse Audio. You can use ALSA library directly to produce sound, but then you have the problem that this sound does not get mixed with other sound sources. For example, if you have a browser open that plays audio you will not be able to hear sounds from your program and the browser at the same time. Also you will have to configure your audio device you want to use. Pulse Audio is the default audio server on most Linux distros and it saves us a lot of work. Also make sure that the Pulse Audio development package is installed. This package might have a different name in other distributions. This program only works with raw audio files. Raw audio files are also called WAVE or IF files. You will see the strings WAVE or IF in the file header. This is a simple demo program for learning purposes that will contain some flaws. We will fix those flaws later. At first we create a char array with a fixed size. This variable will contain the raw audio file and will be passed to Pulse Audio. When we use a fixed size array we don't have to allocate and free memory. Once the variable goes out of scope the memory is released. We use the open syscall in read-only mode and the file descriptor that is returned is assigned to the integer variable MIFT. Now the read system call is used to read the file that has the file descriptor given in argument 1. The second argument is the char array, where the data of the file will be stored. The third argument contains the number of bytes you want to read. Here you typically just use the size of function with your variable from argument 2. Then we close the file. Now you initialize a pointer to a par simple data type that is declared in some Pulse Audio library file. The C library packages that you install are binary files, so called shared objects. Those are placed in slash user slash lib. And you get header files in slash user slash include. I haven't found out yet how to also install the sources of the C libraries. The variable ss of the data type par sample spec is declared. The data type par sample spec must be declared somewhere in the Pulse Audio library inside that compiled binary file that you installed. Par sample spec seems to be a struct. The format means signed 16 integer bit PCM, little endian. The rate must match the rate of the WAV file. We saw the rate of the WAV file earlier with the file command. The file command reads the file headers. File headers are just the first few bytes of a file that may contain some information about the format of the file. Two channels means stereo, which should be the same mode as in the WAV file. Now we use the PR simple new function and give the return value to the simple variable, which is the pointer to a PR simple type. The PAR simple new function seems to create a new audio stream and contains information about it. For example, a name, the sample rate, number of channels. The PA simple write will write our audio file to the Pulse Audio server. PA simple drain will wait for all sent data to finish playing. PA simple free closes the connection and frees resources. One problem with the current code is that we have one big fixed size array where we put all our data in and we don't know how much data our file contains or when the read syscall is done reading.
so we only read 1024 bytes at a time, and use the return code of the read syscall to read in a while loop. When the read function is successful it returns the number of bytes read, and the while condition is true, because a positive number means true in C. But when read returns minus 1 the while condition is false, and the loop ends. Read will return minus 1 when the file position is at the end of the file, and there is nothing more to read. Notice that for the purpose of this video we don't check the return code of every function, and don't handle every error condition. If you listened closely you might have noticed that some unpleasant noise is being played at the beginning. This happens because we pass the entire file content to Pulse Audio including the file header. So the program needs to be adjusted to skip the file header. The length of file headers is not standardized however. So let's not write to Pulse Audio in the first iteration of the loop. The first 1024 bytes are skipped this way. The file header of a WAV file is probably only about 40 bytes long, but for now this is good enough, and from looking at the WAV file we also saw that the audio data seems to start not directly after the file header.